Birth Hospital in Cambridge. My name is Joel Dunning and I'm delighted to bring you this video of their first experiences of this, the forearm versus totally endoscopic robotic lobectomy technique. Uh, this is Per Giorgio Solli at the bedside and we have Adam Perrett uh, who is on the surgeon console and the full team consists also uh, of Aman Kuna and Giuseppe Aresu in Papworth. So we're going to show you how they do this completely endoscopic forearm technique. So we break the bed. Uh, this is going to be a right upper lobectomy uh, and a little bit head up. And then I want to really get across, even though I've sped it up a little bit, how quick and easy it is to set up this robot. They're very small bedside units. Uh, myself and Adam and the team are just bringing them up into view. We just angle them in readiness uh, for the first incisions. Uh, we've got four of them. There's three arms and one endoscopic unit. Um, Adam's ready to do the incisions, get it all prepared, and it really just takes five minutes. They all get pre-draped. Um, uh, we're getting them to the correct height and we're ready to go. So we're going to do a, our ports. So it's very similar to all other robotic techniques with Versus. So the camera goes right at the highest point, about the eighth space. Um, and this is the most important one. We actually do a direct entry technique where we watch the camera go in. So that keeps a really small incision, keeps a good CO2 seal. Uh, so it's really nice. You can see adhesions and we've got a direct entry port. Uh, so this is the most important incision. After that, uh, we're going to do them all from um, landmarks from inside. But basically, we're going to do two incisions, but these are just five mil incisions. And we're trying to keep these in the same intercostal space as well. So this is going to be the left working arm. That's just a five mil allied medical CO2 port. And then this posterior port, uh, which is relatively unique to this group and has really worked really well, um, is the third arm and, uh, and, and this third arm is a 5 mil allied medical port, uh, and this is going to serve as the retraction arm uh, to assist uh, the surgeon during the case. Uh, so there's the uh, third arm port going in, another 5 mil. Really nice that Versius has 5 mils. They really are very small, thin uh, instruments. Because the movements in the wrist of the actual instrument, they've managed to reduce by, by, by quite a bit the amount of... Uh, movement steel wires that are actually down the shaft. So that's the right uh, arm port just going in and now this is just the assistant port. So the right arm port goes as anterior as possible, obviously the head's at the bottom of the screen, uh, and this is the 12 mil assistant CO2 port. So that's going to be the one assistant port, uh, that's going to be for stapling, retraction, suction. Now. Um, this is us setting it up, and it really was a very efficient team. So we just click on all the instruments, that's a Maryland, just put the bipolar diathermy on, uh, it goes to your own energy unit, you don't need any special energy units, and then two graspers, uh, and then, then here we go. We're just going to pop them in the chest. The way you tell the robot where the chest is, is by just doing a quick uh, little circular movement. So it's called port training. So you just need to do a few little quick motions of the arm, then it knows where the skin is, so it's going to keep that still. So I'm now going to just port train the third arm here, just a quick rotation, and that's all it needs, and it now knows exactly where the skin is. It's also a very thin 5 mil port, so if there was any movement of the patient, I don't think there would be any damage uh, at all to the port. Uh, and just now fitting in the, the last arm, as you can see there, they're colour coded. Now what I'm just doing with the instrument there is just making sure that I'm going to get the correct range of movement on the arm so that I get the bedside unit just close, not too close but close enough. Now port train and in it goes. And finally once we've all done that then we're going to just connect the endoscope up uh, to the fourth bedside unit, uh, connect it up, click and we're ready to go. Nice and quick. Uh, and you can see with this view, the ports are really nicely spread out. They're mostly in the line of a single intercostal space. Uh, they're five mil ports. Uh, and this 
we've seen in our early experience really is outstandingly good for pain uh, and a really nice technique. There was no clashing, uh, it was lovely. And then also just notice how much space there is for the assistant. There's plenty of space. I'm going to come to the front and there we have it. Okay, well done. Are you all Yes, yeah, so we're at 1.30, so we'll have a little checklist at 2. And uh, 1.30 is the start time. That's quite efficient, that put together, wasn't it? That was quite a nice. So yeah, that was a really quick uh, docking. You can see there's plenty of space for the assistant. We've actually got an assistant at the front of the back just for these early cases, uh, but uh, lots of space. Uh, and off we go. So let's uh, cut across to the endoscopic view. So you'll immediately notice that the uh, screen's different uh, with the Versus compared to other robots. Uh, the instruments are actually colour coordinated because obviously you could have them at the front of the and the back. So you pull them across to the sides you want. So because we've got two instruments on the left, we pulled the orange and the pink uh, to the left hand side and you've got the green on the right. Uh, so you can see the third arm uh, is working very nicely. We've got two wide graspers that are really good for retracting the lung. We try to stick to using swabs to press on the lung rather than grabbing, even though they're quite gentle instruments really. Um, and, uh, and off we go. And on the right hand side we have a Maryland which has bipolar energy. Uh, you can also have hooks and spatulas and there are scissors that have energy as well. But we, we chose Maryland and graspers uh, for this case. Uh, and I've got a valve sucker. We've got CO2 in the chest at a pressure of six millimeters of mercury going at six liters a minute of flow. So the first thing we did is that uh, it, was, it was a posterior tumor that was up to the parietal pleurus. So this is where the tumor was just touching the chest wall. So we started by taking down these light adhesions uh, just near where the tumor was. Uh, you can see the angulations very nice of the Maryland. Um, the instruments are nice and widely spaced apart. We always put two cigars in the chest uh, for safety and also for, for padding any blood. Um, you need a valve CO2 sucker because otherwise you'll suck the uh, CO2 out and the lung will come up. But uh, this is a 5 mil valve sucker and, uh, and that works very nicely. So we just got down some of those adhesions, just a few more, uh, and then we can get cracking with this right upper lobectomy. Um, the team at Patworth like to do a good, excellent lymphadenectomy first before they go on to a lobectomy, as you should. So we're going to get a really nice view of the subcranial station, the third arm. Uh, the orange third arm is just pushing the upper lobe forwards. Uh, the pink uh, left hand is just lifting up the pleura. And we're going to use our right hand to just break open the pleura and dissect up the bronchus intermedius to expose the uh, subcranial station. See, it's a really huge view. Um, the retraction is really nice. Um, the excellent team at Papworth uh, trained and practiced really hard in AirCAD, and, uh, and they really got this uh, third arm retraction working very nicely. Some other teams have been just using two arms, which you absolutely can. It's quick and easy uh, if you've got very good skilled assistants to do the retraction. But this method's uh, working really nicely for the Papworth team, uh, avoiding the need for there being an extra retraction arm. Also. Uh, if you've got the retractor inside, uh, this allows CO2. We think CO2 is quite good because it does push down the lung. It's really good in emphysematous lung, pushes down the diaphragm. just gives you a bit more space. Again, it's optional. You don't have to have CO2. Uh, and sometimes having a utility incision for the assistant uh, can be good for safety, uh, good for sponge sticks, uh, and good for speed. Uh, but, uh, but actually, this is very similar to my own technique and a really nice demonstration by the Patworth team. So... The left hand is retracting the esophagus, the right hand was just uh, dissecting out the top of the station 7 lymph node and now we're just getting some good retraction so we can peel the station 7 lymph node off the bronchus intermedius. Uh, the Patworth team really understand the importance of complete lymphadenectomy. This is the real advantage of robotics. You get amazing views like this. You can see every single sinew of the Station 7 lymph node. So we're going to be going for complete lymphadenectomy, not just lymph node sampling where we can. And the robot really helps with that. So we're just going to take this large part of the Station 7 lymph node out. Assistant doing some suction. There's the vagus you can see very easily that was just retracted back. And, uh, and we're just taking out uh, that station 7 lymph node. Um, the 
assistant port's 12 millimetres, but it is valved with the CO2, so if there's any lymph nodes more than 5 millimetres, then it's safer to take it out uh, in the thumb of a glove. Uh, and there you go, this is the completely empty subcranial station. You can see the back of the left atrium there, the crena, the left main bronchus, uh, and just some fine little bits of tissue just being diathermied for safety there. There is really nice job uh, of a subcranial uh, lymphadenectomy. Uh, lovely, and there's the bronchus intermediate to the right. So now we're going to move to the station R11 lymph node between the upper lobe and the bronchus intermedius. It's a really good lymph node to dissect out, mainly because we're going to go around the right upper lobe bronchus. So this is a, a great uh, technique, really nice to get this dissected out. Good for the lymphadenectomy, but good makes the uh, subsequent passing of instruments around the bronchus really, really easy. Um, it also gives you options because you can then staple the bronchus straight away really early or you can do it a little bit later. Um, this is demonstrating very nicely the good 90 degree angulation that these instruments can achieve uh, and, and you probably don't really get the impression of, of the fact they are quite significantly smaller than other robotic instruments. Uh, other instruments are 8 mils diameter and these are just 5 mils in diameter probably can't appreciate that on this video and it's better appreciated when you actually hold them in your hand how small they really are. Uh, so that was station 11 just uh, done a little bit dissected out and now we're going to retract with the third arm push the upper lobe down uh, and then we're going to come in and uh, have a look at station 10 and then go for 4 R. Again, this is a really important part of a right upper lobectomy where you dissect between the truncal branch of the PA and the uh, right main bronchus. I think it's really important. It's also good to get these station 11, station 10 lymph nodes out and dissected from under the ozygous before you then go over the ozygous to do a good lymphadenectomy um, at this point. So dissected under the ozygous and now we're going to go over the ozygous. Uh, we do really like these rolled up cigars. Uh, we try and keep two in the chest at all times and probably we go through about five to ten each case. So now we're going to start the lymphadenectomy, retracting with the grasper and, uh, and dissecting with the bipolar Maryland. This grasper is quite a decent size, you'll probably notice. They are actually developing a smaller, thinner one with a tip-up end so we'll probably be seeing that. Uh, Versus really are developing very fast indeed. Uh, there's going to be advanced energy probably within six months and they'll have ICG on their robot within six months as well. They've got a fantastic uh, Versus app so that every case you do uh, appears uh, on, on your app so you can collate all your cases uh, in really really good detail and they've got a very simple um, SD card system for recording so you just literally uh, record and then pop it out put it on your computer so so very user friendly very surgeon friendly mainly because Mark Slack the founder and CMO is a surgeon he almost invented this robot for himself did everything he wanted from a robot um, so this is now taking out some of the station 4R lymph node um, and uh, just using a little swab to clean out there. You can actually see the trachea now. You can see the skeletonized trachea uh, very nicely done. You can see under the ozygous, over the ozygous, uh, and you can see the uh, trachea now. Now just doing a little bit more dissection um, between the truncal branch and the right uh, upload bronchus because uh, Adam Perrett really knows the importance of this in being able to safely get your stapler around the truncal branch later. We often say that, uh, that thoracic surgery is a lymphadenectomy with a lobectomy at the end, uh, and this certainly was true in this case. We've done a great job of 7, 4R, 10, uh, and we really set ourselves up nicely now to complete the lobectomy. So now we use that third arm to retract the upper lobe posteriorly, uh, and we're going to use our left and right hand to do two-handed dissection. Uh, we saw the middle lobe vein just below us there and there's the right upper lobe vein. Very easy for us to see. And we're just going to start the dissection to get round the upper lobe vein. Really nice stable view. Um, it's a 30 down camera. Um, they have either straight or 30 down cameras. Um, and uh, I think all thoracic surgeons really are using 30 down, although I know a lot do use straight cameras, especially in the USA. So we use the Maryland just to initially start 
getting under the uh, vein. Again, just trying to get the nice angle and um, making that initial little space there. The, you can see the little camera icon uh, bottom right and it shows the angulation of the camera. There's also some little dots if you just see either side of the circular icons. These little dots on a semicircle, they indicate the, how wound up the instruments are because they will max out if you, they, they can't limit, limitlessly go round and round. Uh, no robotic instruments can, so it indicates if it's too wound up and there's actually an easy press function to unwind if you do find that happening. Um, so we just got that nice blunt uh, left hand grasp around the right upper lobe vein, we'll pass a sling, lift that up and, uh, and then through the assistant 12 more port we're just going to pass a gold tip tan 30 uh, cavidian and just close and fire on the right upper lobe vein. Um, the difference if you're coming to robotics for the first time from VATS, uh, probably the biggest difference uh, is giving over your stapling to your assistant. So you do have to learn a language between you and your assistant. So you have to learn sort of to go um, rotate clockwise, anti-clockwise, uh, maybe talk about uh, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, uh, 9 o'clock uh, as nomenclature and articulating left and right. So, so quite useful to practice that because most surgeons are not used to handing over the stapler to their assistant. So we've done the vein and now we're going to go towards the truncal branch that we've cleaned out really nicely at the back of it. Uh, we just need to clean some of the station 10 lymph nodes out the way at the front and then we'll be ready for the truncal branch stapling. As you can see we've got that third arm just repositioning, just lifting that right upper lobe up a bit because it was a bit pressed over the bronchus there. So that's a really nice example of just making a bit more space. So just really good for safety. And just doing the initial dissection with the Maryland and then we actually decided we'd swap the uh, grasper in the Maryland, put the grasper in the right hand because it is so nice and blunt. It's a really safe instrument for going around vessels. Uh, we can get any angle we like and we're just going to use the uh, grasper to get around the trunk branch. So a few little gentle movements. Again, if you're a VAT surgeon coming to robotics, you, you, what you lose in tactile feedback, you gain in visual feedback. So, so Adam's doing a good demonstration of just moving the instrument up and down, up and down, seeing what's moving in the tissue and what isn't. And the, the trunk branch wasn't moving, which indicates that it's safe to proceed. Um, if it was catching on a piece of tissue, you'd see that trunk branch moving up and down and deforming. And so you use your amazing visual feedback with your 3D uh, 10 times magnification uh, to really get that uh, move nice. And now the assistant brings in a TAN 30 gold tip uh, and ready to fire. Of note, the Versus screen for the surgeon's console uh, is open platform. So you uh, wear some uh, 3D glasses uh, and it's a really nice open view. So you feel more in the room and... Um, and we pointed the surgeon towards uh, his his bedside assistant so that they could easily hear. You can actually stand up as well with their console. It can be raised all the way to standing, so you don't even need to sit down uh, if you want to keep your legs moving. Um, and all the all the buttons are, are on the hand controllers, so you don't need any foot pedals, which is just a little bit simpler. So we've done the truncal branch. There's now uh, this lymph node just to get out the way. Uh, and have a look for the posterior ascending artery, which is there 90% of the time. So, as you can see, a really nice view, uh, very safe. You can just see uh, the apical vein there, and, uh, and just lifting off this lymph node from the main PA, and you're just starting to see the posterior ascending uh, A2 branch there, uh, which we'll be needing to fire the final um, arterial vessel to to get rid of and there's the lymph node out very small lymph nodes which is taken out directly and we're just peeling off the final parts of this lymph node that's always there between the truncal branch and the right upper lobe uh, bronchus so really good job of just uh, seeing every single piece of tissue every little tiny vessel going to this lymph node so that it's uh, nice and dry 
and it's taken away and also taken on block completely there that lymph node great view really nice job and here's this uh, posterior ascending very small vessel so the hub of the these instruments as i say are five mil so that's probably about a three mil diameter vessel so we had a bit of a discussion should we use a stapler or should we use some energy um Covidian actually do an 8mm stapler, although it's quite expensive, so we chose instead to just use the um, gold tip. We're going to do that in a minute. We felt that we'd just do the right up load bronchus first, so the Maryland got round very easily, especially easily as remember we took away that 11R from the back, which meant that space was really simple. We needed virtually no dissection to get round that, so literally quick push with the Maryland and then round with the stapler. Again, you can see all the far ends are very nice from the assistant port placed anteriorly as low as possible. And, uh, and then that's the bronchus fired. And we chose not to do an inflation test because we felt we could see the bronchus intermediate so clearly. We dissected out the back and the front uh, and we didn't feel that would be necessary. Now this is the uh, posterior ascending branch with a, um, a tan 30 and just have to be very careful looking at the base of the vessel on the trunk on the main PA so as not to stretch that at all and uh, done very nicely and safely under good vision. So that's it, that's the lobectomy done really. Uh, just strip off all the lymph nodes from the bronchus intermedius uh, being super meticulous as the team at Patworth are and, uh, and all that's left now is to uh, do our stapling of the fissure. Uh, a nice straight staple fisher last really good for air leak uh, and so really congratulations to the team at papworth they have full use of the robot every single day uh, all their lists it is entirely theirs um, they're going to be inundated with developers and engineers from cambridge medical robotics which are just up the road from them so i think we're going to see some really exciting things from the team in papworth um, they're all going to be trained on it all going to be doing their lobectomy cases as their standard procedures on versus using this forearm totally endoscopic um, uh, robotic technique uh, and congratulations to them for making it such a success as we just see the final stapling is really important to make sure you get the staple the stapler right down onto the basal pie there checking that you're on the on the fissure and, uh, and just firing them all. This, this actually was their first uh, lobectomy. Uh, this was the first lobectomy in the UK by uh, a versus thoracic surgeon, uh, which is really good. And actually, it was uh, very impressive time-wise, considering um, the unfamiliarity relatively. Um, it was 3 hours and 20, which was really very impressive for a first ever attempt so well done to the team there as we do our final few uh, staple firings and then we're going to pass in a bag and then we'll be pulling it out of the assistant port which is about it's about the ninth space perhaps ninth or tenth space nice and low um, lots and lots of local anesthetic uh, in there and we're just going to take this out uh, with an ender bag the team also practiced emergency de-docking um, in case of emergencies. It was phenomenally simple. As you can see when we put the, these little thin arms in, it's very simple to unclick them and remove them in an emergency. There isn't a large, massive robot above the patient. So, you know, almost trivially simple. We all, I, th I think the team were left thinking, is that it? Uh, when we did our emergency de-dock, it really is that simple. And then the Patworth team, um, led by Chenman, their expert uh, thoracic anaesthetist. They're very meticulous about their blocks. He does intercos, he does, a, he does a paravertebral at the start of the operation, and then we do high volume local anaesthetic with steroid. Um, local anaesthetic at every single space from the first to the 10th, uh, and also a phrenic nerve block as well, uh, which really does a great job of keeping the patient pain free. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful and helpful. Uh, and certainly look out for many more from Adam Perrett and the team at Papworth. Um, maybe go and phone them up, ask them to visit, uh, check out more of their videos online. And, uh, and do let us know what you think. Um, 
what are the advantages? We certainly think it's quick, it's nimble, it fits any theatre. You can even get it in a van and take it to other hospitals uh, or certainly across to Addenbrooke's, all sorts of things. Um, so, so, you know, it's a really excellent system. Congratulations to Versus, Mark Slack and their team done an amazing job uh, with this uh, ever-developing robot. And I think we're going to see some very exciting things uh, in the future. And there's the lung up. Uh, and, and then the final thing is you, you fix, finish surgery, you you flash the QR code to get it on your app.